Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia, and today I'm going to show you how to make a miniature 12 by 12 bulletin board uh, that has a two inch frame of scrap fabric decoupage. It's a really cute project, and it sort of came to me after I had made this one here. I'll show you that. Here's the frame I made originally, and this was a bigger piece. This is 16 by 20. It was a nice wooden unfinished frame, has no glass in it, and then a 16 by 20 corkboard insert. Um, originally I was gonna show you how to do this, but this is a little pricey. I actually had a coupon for the items, but um, even with the coupon it was a little pricey and I'm all about getting inexpensive crafts. So um, I came up with a different way and I had some supplies on hand, so it actually cost me hardly anything, just some of the glue is what it cost me. It's a lot of fun, and especially for all you folks that have tons of scrap fabrics and don't know what to do with them, this is a really fun, quirky way to do it. Um, and it will look cute in dorm rooms, in a bedroom, in an office, uh, and you can make different ones, different colors. It'll be cute, maybe three in a row, and you'll see how it turns out when we get started. So here we go. The supplies you're gonna need are not too many. You're gonna need some Mod Podge for the decoupage. I use gloss, uh, but it's up to you. You can use matte, or um, but I just I like the way the gloss turns out. You're gonna need some good scissors for your fabric, and of course you're gonna need lots of fabric scraps. Today I'm gonna use yellow. I used, um, you'll see the blue one I made when it's finished, and you saw the pink. And I'm gonna make another one in pink, because I think I'm gonna make three or four of these for my office. Um, so anyway, plenty of scraps of all different shapes and sizes and, and uh, colors. You can make this multicolored. I just like the, the solid look of it. You're gonna need cork panels like this. They are, and they're easy to find at any craft store. They're 12 inches square by half an inch. Um, the, the, the depth is half an inch. Do not make the mistake I did, and you can sort of see, I don't know if you can. These are actually two cork board, uh, panels layered together. I made, I bought, 12 inches square by a quarter inch thick. You do not want that. You definitely want the half inch thick. That makes the push pins can go in really easily. Um, and all I did in this case was I glued the two panels together uh, with a hot glue gun um, to say I didn't want to throw them out or anything because they work just fine. So anyway, you're gonna need one of these. You're gonna need, I'll just leave that there for now. You're gonna need a piece of cardboard. Big enough to cut out a 12 by 12 square. I just kept an old box. Um, you know, whatever works for you. Um, and that is basically it. You're gonna need some gloves if you wanna work with the gloves I recommended. This project gets really, really messy. I will warn you of that right now. Cover your surface. Um, I'm using an old towel. You can use parchment paper, wax paper, whatever you want. Um, be careful though if you're using newspaper, old newspaper, because sometimes that print can get wet and it'll wipe off on the fabric and or on your fingers and you don't want that um, all over the fabric. That'll ruin the look of it. Um, oh, you're gonna need a paintbrush, of course, and again, protect that work service. You're gonna need a glue gun for later, and I usually just keep mine ready and handy to go. So here we go, let's get started. If you're a quilter like me, you're gonna cut out this square, and you're lucky you have a nice square ruler like this that, that'll work for you. Um, if not, the easiest thing to do, quite honestly, is get your ruler, and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is trace around the shape and cut it out square um, and you'll use a rotary cutter or an exacto knife watch your fingers when you're doing that you don't want anybody to get a cut or hurt um, but basically you would trace around trace out and cut out your 12 inch square and I have already done one to save a little bit of time and then you want to cut out the center of it so here's the one I cut out here's the square I cut out 12 inches and then what I did is I measured in two inches from each border and made a square in the center. And that helps with that quilting ruler. Um, that's where that quilting ruler, ruler, excuse me, really came in handy. But bottom line is you trace out a square in the middle, two inches in from each side, and you cut out that center square. And there you have your frame. Um, and that's what you're gonna use. You don't want to use the back side. I mean, it'll get covered up with fabric, but some of the fabric might be thinner, so you'll see the black and then maybe the sticker. Um, so I use that side, and you can decide which one. So let's get rid of that cutting board, and here's the old towel I'm using. Um, and we will get started. This is the fun part. And I will actually put on a glove. I 
hate putting on these gloves, but this project gets really messy. I usually have, I don't know if I said that already, a wet rag on hand to wipe it off of my fingers. Um, but you can use the gloves too. All right. Shake up that Mod Podge, get it ready to use. You're gonna need a lot of it. You're generous with the Mod Podge on this. And you're gonna start, and I like to start at a corner just because I really don't like to do the corners. They're sort of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but you can, a lot of manipulation with your finger is just fine. So you're gonna get that Mod Podge and just start coating the top side, the front side, and you can already see how it's already getting on the, the, the uh, towel. So you wanna use it. This is a nice old towel that was going, heading for the trash anyway. It's all torn and frayed. All right, so you're gonna put a little base of the Mod Podge on, and then you're gonna pick a fabric. So we'll just start with this one. And you put it any which way you want. Now, the one thing I would suggest, you're gonna, you don't want a piece that's not gonna go all the way over the edges. You're gonna smooth that down, and you're gonna put more Mod Podge on, and you're gonna flip it over, and you just wanna get that fabric coated with the Mod Podge. Flip it over, and you can use the brush for a lot of this. The brush is great for getting out wrinkles and this and that. You can really see how you can work that. That way your fingers don't get so messy. In those corners though, you might need to use the, your finger to just pull that fabric through a little bit more. This is the back side, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. You want it nice and smooth though on the front side. And then once that fabric's on, you're gonna put more Mod Podge on top. You use a lot of Mod Podge in this project. Don't be stingy with the Mod Podge. And the reason I like to flip it over is you get that nice finished look on the outside and on the inside edge, which looks really good once it's all finished. So let's keep working here. I'll show you a couple more pieces. And let's see. I sort of like this piece here. Let's see, we'll try it like that maybe. Like so, it's sort of fun to play with. It's like that your kid coloring again. Really. And then just use your brush to pull that over. Again, it's a corner, so you might need to fiddle with it a little bit with your fingers. And then cover the front. Sometimes you have, that's why you have to work a little fast. Mod Podge will dry quickly. So you don't want to take too long and let it sit um, if you don't uh, finish the one piece. And then you want to get lots of little hairs and strings get in there. All right, let's see. This might be pretty there. Yeah, I like that one. do too many more just because it's, I mean, you can sort of see where I'm going with this. Smooth out all that Mod Podge so you don't have big clumps of it. There we go. Now I would add some more before I put that piece of, that's a bigger piece of fabric. So I would definitely add some more Mod Podge before I added that. You wanna make sure to cover all that surface, all that cardboard surface. Smooth that down. And 
do one more for you here. Let's see. This one's sort of fun, the bananas. I like the bananas. Again, this is the back side. does not need as much glue as the front you really don't this one you just want to really slather it on there all right and I think this will be the last one we do this is a bigger piece Put a little bit there so you're just going to add a little bit right there nice bring it over and then don't forget the more important side is the front side and there you go i'm not going to finish this that would take too long for this video but that gives you an idea of what you're going to do and you're basically going to do that around the entire frame and once you're done with that, you're going to set the thing aside and I would get it, put it, excuse me, uh, put my arm in front of you. Um, anyway, once you're done with all four sides and it's completely covered and you're happy with the way it looks, you're going to set it aside to dry. I let this dry overnight at least. It, Mod Podge, even though it dries quickly, it still has that tacky feel to it. So you definitely want to set it aside to dry. I would actually just get a piece of parchment paper like this. Set it aside to dry. And again, if you don't have time, if something comes up and you have to step away from this project, I'm like I am, I'm gonna do this later and finish it later. Um, it's fine too. You can just pick up where you left off. So set that aside overnight to dry. And then when you're once it's dried, you're ready to add it to your cork board. So you're gonna get your cork board square, like so. And here is one I made in blue. Um, one thing to remember, it gets a lot, I think I don't remember if I said that or not at the beginning of the video, the Mod Podge will make the fabric darker, so in it significantly darker. You will notice that. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking for a certain color scheme or uh, you might want to test it first because it definitely comes out, um, the fabric is darker. It almost looks, it basically looks like it's wet and even when it's dry and this is dry, um, it still looks like it's wet a little bit. Um, you can see here the back, you can see where I flipped over all the pieces. It's sort of messy, but you won't see it, so it doesn't really matter. And then you're ready to glue this on. And I have my hot glue gun ready. And you want to really fix it on nicely. And again, you got to work pretty fast. Glue guns dry so quickly, and that's the nice part of them. Although, on the other hand, it's also not such a nice part because you got to work so fast and I put lots of glue on I don't want this to fall off it might be a little watch your fingers it's really really hot always be careful even up the sides and let it lay it down looks like it's all nicely covered you have a little bit of time and then press it down it does get hot so watch out nice and firmly let that glue dry And there you have it. I absolutely love this little cork board, um, the bulletin board with the scrap fabric decoupage frame. I think it's so pretty. Um, you can use uh, those um, double-sided st sticky tape to hang them up. Sometimes these, it comes in the packages where you peel off one side and you stick them to the wall. Um, nice flat, you got a 10 inch square inside where you can put little pictures, a postcard, whatever you want. Really brightens up a room and office. And I, like I said, I'm gonna finish that yellow one and I'll probably make another pink one and maybe a green one and put four on the wall and have just a really uh, cute bulletin board that'll look great in any room. I think it'd be really cute with college coming up uh, in a dorm room. I think how much fun would that be for to, to give as a gift to somebody. Uh, let that glue dry all the way. It should, it should dry pretty quickly before you hang it. And there you go. I appreciate you watching today. I hope you liked this project. It was a lot of fun. And um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.